Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. Uh, I have a little to say about a really difficult topic that I've been seeing coming up in the news uh, lately on the on the Facebook pages, the social media and like that. And uh, where I've seen it coming up, I've seen a wide range of um, emotions regarding regarding these topics. Um, ranging from very positive to very negative and all the manners in between. But I have a few common sense guidelines because you know we're in the midst of the great clearing, right? The clearing of the awakening, the, the awakening that's taking place on Earth. And there are all these energy strands, very dark energy strands that have uh, settled here on Earth and in the newosphere and in our uh, lower mental bodies and deep down in Earth, in the, in the most dense parts of Earth as well, which are the regions of the hell worlds in the astral realm. And these are all coming up in clearing. And through our human instruments, our human electromagnetic fields, we humans are aiding this clearing. Consequently, a lot of light, light workers have come into this incarnation of the Great Awakening or the Ascension uh, with great with tiny um, tiny tags or uh, touchstones that allow us to um, in this incarnation to to tag on to the, the deepest darkest wounding um, in this world and to help it to clear through our own electromagnetic fields through our spiritual practice and so forth through our uh, fractal identification with the electromagnetic field of earth and through our faith in God so uh, the light workers the path finders and the way showers have a lot of work to do during this this lifetime and one of the areas the area that I was talking about at the beginning of this video where soul wounding has occurred and soul healing is now taking place has to do with um, what's it called? The sexual predator energy strand. So if you go online and you look uh, for the search for the word sexual predator in uh, quotation marks, you'll come up with all these pictures of people, typically men, sometimes women all these people that are considered to be sexual predators, right? But the sexual predator relationship is not just people who are sexual predators. The mugshots that you can see at Google Images, for instance, it's not like that. Uh, it's, it's a relationship of prey and predator that I talked about years ago, around 2011, as uh, the aggressor-victim paradigm, or vice versa. So what we have in the higher dimensions is the love of our great hearts, uh, Christ consciousness, uh, um, unconditional love for, for all beings everywhere. That's in the fifth dimension and higher. And beneath that in the fourth and third dimensions we have quite a, um, an incomplete picture, okay, which has like settled down uh, here on earth into what is called um, the predator-prey relationship. It has to do with war and other things too. Um, so, so we have what's called sexual predator and that's both people who prey upon other people sexually and people who are preyed upon. Typically the weak and helpless. Um, then we have uh, predator-prey relationship to do with like death and uh, torture and those kinds of things. The first chakra uh, instead of the yeah instead of the second chakra, and it's the same there. We have the people who war and the people who are warred upon in relationship, like um, in a in a, a chemistry experiment where two kinds of um, two kinds of ingredients, two kinds of chemicals are in a state of like interaction with each other and uh, 
are in equilibrium with each other, you know? A good example of the, the predator-prey relationship with regard to war has to do with the, um, the, the latitudinal line that Los Angeles is on, which is also the latitudinal line of the, um, of the Persian nations. So, uh, in, here in America, we are warring upon the people in the Persian nations, and we feel that they are warring upon us. So there's a, like a double reaction going on. Them, we think, in our minds, warring against us, and so therefore we must war against them, you know. It would actually, it's, um, it's a chemical reaction that's taking place, and the whole thing is in equilibrium. And what it's going to take for that to change is faith and hope and the charity of, of the heart, aligning the, the will, the heart and the mind with the great will, the great heart, and the great mind of God. Same thing, uh, and some of us have to do it. And the minute some of us do it, it will fractalize out to other people. And then there will be no notion of being warred upon and needing to war amongst the people of Los Angeles and the people of the Persian nations. In the same way, and to get back to this very difficult topic of sexual predation, um, I think that the thing to do is not to enact legislation so much as to, to, as to treat uh, this this dynamic equilibrium with, uh, with, in the same way, with faith, hope, and the charity of good works, with love towards all, cons all the s eternal souls involved in this very difficult drama. Um, again, once, once more, and first and foremost, aligning our own wills and hearts and minds with the great will and heart and mind of God, you see. Now, the healing is going to take place on a soul-by-soul -soul basis, I feel. Uh, the minute a soul becomes aware of uh, being involved in that kind of drama, then the thing to do is to create physical distance from, from others who may be involved in the opposite side of the equation. I think, for instance, that spiritually aware people who have uh, been involved in sexual predator-like uh, relations or like been caught in that, in that um, drama before, especially those who have been caught by the law because of habitual sexual predation, soul wounding, the thing that they need to do right now is to distance themselves insofar as possible from the opportunity to continue with the soul wounding. Because as we stand back from our soul wounding, and as we um, begin to feel the hidden and repressed emotions that, that are the cause of the habit, then we can clear and, and get rise into that space of unconditional love, which has, just by its nature, no predation whatsoever in it. Um, I realize that in this society, um, predation, warring or sexual, is looked down upon so greatly that it creates a social stigma, a really large social stigma, for quite a few people, especially those people that are forced to wear uh, what's it called? Um, anklets, ankle-like um, devices that locate them in space and time for law enforcement. What that is is like social stigma in the form of like bling, you know. <laughs> and it naturally creates in the people that have to wear them a sense of hatred of those that have done this to them set them aside and mark them out as not, not human, more like animals. So, um, so, whereas society may consider them to be uh, unable to change, 
my feeling is that they can change, but they, they first must remove themselves from the temptation to act out these, these soul wounding continued behaviors. I especially think they need to look at the hatred they may feel for having been caught and forced into a position of, of uh, abstaining from these behaviors um, by law enforcement and by society. First look at that emotion, okay, and, and try and overcome that and turn it around. Um, first look at the desire to overcome the restraints and and remove them or find a way around them and like that. Look at that and, and figure out the, the emotion that's behind it. Perhaps early childhood soul wounding. The work that you do in this very difficult arena, having chosen through your own soul's free will before incarnation to do it, this work is going to be of great benefit to all those who are unable to do that work. So I'm speaking mainly to those on the spiritual path and who have taken on this, this kind of very dark, deep, heavy, dense energy to deal with in this lifetime. Know that you are not that energy. This is just the energy that you've set your soul to setting free. You are an eternal soul, and from the perspective of that soul, you will be able to resolve these uh, soul wounding issues and these entanglements with karma. Uh, this is the time when this is happening, and you are the ones who have chosen to do it.